Okay, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right. So how's things going over there, man? Yeah, everything's cool. Uh, winter just just in, so we're just trying to get used to the weather. But, you know, with the band, everything's cool. We're re uh, performing and uh, rehearsing and, you know, everything that comes with being in a band. <laughs> cool. Okay, I'll do a little intro here, and then we'll uh, we'll get rolling. Okay. All right, Metalheads, this is DJ Rem, and you have a Ray and Path. How's it going? Everything's cool, man. How are you? I am doing well. Just got through the uh, the Thanksgiving holiday here in the States and just chilling out. Oh, happy Thanksgiving. Man. Yeah, thanks, man. I don't, do you guys celebrate anything similar to that over there? Uh, we don't have that, but uh, since I've, I've lived in the States for four years, I mean, I know about it. Only a few people celebrate it here. Right. So Okay, so tell me about... Okay, first thing I want to do is I want to thank Pitch Black Records for hooking us up because they rock and they do a great job. So yes, they do. I want to give them props. And, yeah, so what's going on with you guys currently? Well, we just released our uh, album, uh, Era Imperium, and uh, it's going well. We are uh, trying to support it with uh, some live shows and... Uh, you know, we're going to Greece next month, and, um, you know, hopefully when we get back, we'll try to write some new material for the next uh, record. Excellent. Yeah, I was reading about that, that you guys are kind of starting to work on some new material, so. Yes, uh, we, actually, we already announced the upcoming uh, CD called Stigmata, and it's going to be out, I don't know, I guess around June. Very cool. I look forward to it. So I also, I also was I noticed that you're, you kind of have like some side projects too going on. You got like a bunch of stuff going on. Myself, you mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll be singing in the in another in SD uh, by Astronomicon. Um, it's a friend of mine. He has um, he has his band, and. Um, I'm, do, I'm, I'm singing with another band that play hard rock. The name is uh, The Unreal, which is a pretty cool band. Uh, it's something different, you know, for me. I don't like to do the same things over and over again. Very cool. Uh, so I have to say, your, your voice, I'm not, <laughs> not, not rub no, nose or, not brown nose or nothing. Your, no, your voice is amazing, man. I love your voice. Well, thanks, man. Thanks. I've really, I've really gotten into the whole par power metal sound lately. That's kind of been the thing I've really been digging. And when mm -hmm. I, when, when the Pitch Black sent your, sent your tunes, I was like, man, this guy, this guy's rock. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. Uh, actually, uh, we're trying to do something different uh, because you know, uh, right now things with power metal, you listen to one band, you've heard them all, you know. Right. So we're trying, we're trying to put something of, uh, you know, some folk music, some of our own influences in there. Yeah, well, I was just, actually, I was just sitting here while I was waiting for the interview, I was listening to the album. Did I hear, like, some violin or something in one of the songs? Well, uh, not only violin, but other instruments, too. But, uh, okay, there are samples. Uh, most of them are samples. But, you know, we tried to use different instruments. You know, not the basic guitar, two guitars, bass, drums, you know, try to put whatever fits the song, whatever uh, is doing the song a favor. I mean, trying to, how to explain it, uh, and do something different, I would say. Yeah, well, I dig it. I definitely dig it. What, so how did you guys all get together in the first place? How, how did the band start? Uh, the band started in the States, actually. Uh, a friend of mine uh, uh, from Boston, and we just started playing together and writing some tunes. And then uh, he went to live in Hong Kong, and then I came back to Cyprus and continued the band, uh, found some new members, and 
ever since, you know, we keep been uh, trying to record and tour and record and tour ever since. Excellent. How did you guys come up with the name for the band? How did you guys do that? Okay, with the name we had a few um, problems. Uh, I don't know if you heard. <laughs> uh, but, uh, okay, you know, the internet was just you know, the new thing in 95, 90 something. Right. So I was just playing around with it and I found a site of uh, botanology and uh, there was this flower, it was called Arayan, the Arayan. Uh, so I found, I, I, I really liked the name, so I just kind of used it and because I thought it sounded cool and I thought it sounded epic. Uh, of course, we had some. Uh, I was young. I was naive. You know, I uh, I couldn't predict what what was gonna follow. So anyway, to keep a long story short, I we uh, recently added a, an extra A. You know, just to make sure that uh, people don't connect us with uh, that kind of stuff. You know. Right. Yeah. Because <laughs> they actually um. Scott, our, my graphics guy, he made he made the banner, and when I sent it to show Pitch Black, he, they're like, uh, "You need to add an A in there, please." <laughs> <laughs> so we had to do a little, uh, yeah, switcheroo. Yeah, because that changes the pronunciation, also, you know. Right. Pronunciation is, you know, somebody who doesn't see it written, he just <clears throat> hears it. You know, he's gonna read it differently with the extra A. Yeah. Be honest with you though, the the old spelling way, I didn't, I never thought twice about the name. I was just like, okay, you know, you know what I mean. I didn't take it the that negative way, like I'm sure a lot of people yeah. did. Uh, well, some did, some didn't. You know, it, it's it's just there was always somebody there to remind you of it. So right, we just thought we'd change it and you know, get rid of the you know, the reputation. <laughs> yeah, don't need that. Okay, so I really, really love the album cover, and I'm always mm -hmm. curious to know who comes up with that kind of with those designs for covers. So, who uh, who did your artwork for you guys? Uh, actually, my wife did it. <laughs> oh, excellent. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, we sat down together and had a few ideas. I had the first idea about the pyramid and the Anubis uh, statues. And uh, she she just took the idea and uh, developed it. That's cool. It's one of my favorite uh, covers too. I mean, I like this epic element in it. Oh yeah! Plus, it has that personal touch that your wife did. How cool is that? Yeah, exactly. Yep. What um? Oh, I was gonna ask. Oh, music scene. Okay, when I th when I hear when I hear of you know of Cyprus, I, I don't think of it as being a huge metal place. But is there yeah. how, is there a scene there of metal that's pretty good? Well, uh, depending on what you mean by scene, uh, uh, there are live shows, many live shows, uh, very few bands. Uh, but uh, only recently they started recording albums. You know. Um, most of them just had a band and played live shows and played covers. So it's improved definitely the last uh, years. And, uh, you know, the band started recording albums. So there's a lot of talent here. And, uh, you know, in every aspect, in every category of metal. Um, so I think it's um, a rising force. <laughs> Even if we're small, we have some good quality bands here. Right. Okay, so forgive my ignorance here, but. How big is Cyprus? How many people live there? Uh, it's very small. Um, okay, the uh, official population is uh, eight hundred fifty thousand something. Okay. But uh, we have, you know, we have many uh, foreigners who live here. So you know, all together, it could be one point five million. Okay. And, and how big is it? I mean, c could you kind of compare it to uh, like a state here in the U.S. to kind of give me a comp size comparison? Um, okay, uh, it's smaller than Florida, I guess. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, it's the third biggest island in the Mediterranean. Okay. Uh, 
So I don't know how uh, how large is that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. Sorry, I'm not trying to get off on this high tangent. I just <laughs> come down and see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Well, I've been. You know, this is what's cool about what I get to do. I get to talk to a lot of different bands all over the world and. I'm learning a lot about other places and countries that I would have never known. So it's just, it's neat yeah. to me. It's cool, man. Where did you guys record the album at? Uh, we recorded in Germany, uh, as we did with the previous album as well. Um, and uh, we did some recordings here too. I mean, our producer came down. Um, uh, we, we found this studio, this guy. He had a band called Sun Voicing back in the 90s, and I was a fan of the band. And um, you know, uh, suddenly I found out that he's also a producer. So I checked out the work he did, and I thought it would be perfect, you know, to work with a, a singer from a band I used to like that was also a good producer. So we just uh, tried it with a previous album. It was fantastic. I mean, the sound was fantastic. So there was no other choice for us for this album as well. Very cool. Speaking of influences and stuff, so what were some of your influences, uh, you know, that got you into music, just music in general? I mean, what what kind of bands and what kind of artists out there were your, were like, oh man, I, I love, I want to do this? Um, pretty much Iron Maiden, Iron Maiden was yes. the, the band that, all of us were listening to, I mean, mostly. Um, I mean, I, I watched that uh, Live After Death, I mean, around 100 times. <laughs> so, uh, Iron Maiden, I would say, Manowar, uh, Queen's Rife, um, Metallica, Crimson Glory, this kind of band. Yep. Very good. Yeah, I love Manowar. Their songs are so epic sounding, they're amazing. Yeah, especially the older albums. Yep. So where can people buy this album at if they want to buy it? Um, they can find it um, through our Facebook. They can find it through our MySpace. Uh, they can find it through the Pitch Black Records uh, official site. And I'm not sure we have distribution in America. I, I, I'm, I think uh, Feebos from Pitch Black uh, uh, did something about that. I think. He did send a few copies there, but you know, your safest bet for our album, you know, which is a bit underground, would be to check the site, to do it through internet. Right. Okay. So can they can they buy like digital downloads like on iTunes and Amazon and stuff too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they can also download it digitally from uh, iTunes and Amazon and a few other places. Okay. Very cool. Oh, you know, something I forgot to ask you. Can you uh, just real quick go through the other members of the band and, and just mention what their spots are? Yes, of course. Uh, <coughs> my brother uh, Socrates is on the guitars. Um, <coughs> Alexis Kidaras uh, also on the guitars. Uh, Paris Lambrou on the bass. Uh, Stefan Dietrich um, on the drums. And George uh, Callis on the keyboards. Okay, thank you. So how often do you guys get together and practice and jam and stuff? Are you able to do that quite regularly? or? Um, actually, we get together to rehearse only when we have live shows. Okay. Or when we are about to record an album. Uh, so we don't have something like a, on a regular basis, where, you know, throughout the year. Um, I think it works better for us this way, you know. Yeah. So... Uh, we don't have that pressure of, you know, having to rehearse all the time. When the time comes, uh, you know, we study at home, we get ready, and we start rehearsing. Yeah. Do you, so, do you guys all live in Cyprus, or are you kind of scattered around? Um, we are scattered around. Uh, uh, one of our guitarists, he, he lives in uh, Greece, Saloniki. Our drummer, he's German. Um, you know, sometimes in the live shows, we, you know, if he can't, come down, we use uh, other drummers, friends of ours, um, sometimes other guitarists. Um, yeah, and George, uh, the keyboard player, he 
he used to live in London. Now he's moving to LA because he's doing the um, um, uh, film scoring uh, thing. So yeah, we're pretty much scattered around. Yeah, no doubt. Well, that definitely would make it hard to practice all the time, wouldn't it? Yes, yes, definitely. So if I was to uh, if I was to grab your MP3 player, however you listen to music, what kind of what kind of music would I find you listening to right now? Um, well, it's pretty diverse. Uh, okay, I have our album on it, but uh, I don't listen to it because I actually got sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, hard rock, uh, like um, um, uh, House of Lords, I like this band, and um, the old Queensryche albums, uh, the Sabbath uh, discographies on my iPod, and um, uh, what else? Sometimes some thrash metal, like the new Overkill, um, uh, Creator. I can listen to everything, pretty much. No, yep, me too. I have a wide range of stuff I listen to. Yeah, there's no point in uh, limiting yourself. I mean, it's music. Uh, you know, some people do that. They only listen to, you know, 80s metal. Or they only listen to thrash, you know. You miss out on uh, very good music if you do that. I agree. I, I can't stand it when people get hung up and stuck in genres. It's like, really? Why? Yeah. Just like you said, why limit yourself? There's so much good stuff out there. Yeah, exactly. Even, even you know, out of metal, I mean, why not? Yep. Hey, I like to listen to Lady Gaga sometimes. What can I say? <laughs> no, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. My guilty pleasure. I said it, I said it on recording. Okay, so anything else that you'd like to, uh, to to let the world know when I share this interview with everybody about you guys? Anything else that we haven't talked about? So the whole world is going to listen to this? Well, <laughs> anybody from around the world that wants to, because I'll be spamming the heck out of Facebook. So, <laughs> Well, I would just say, you know, check out our album, Here I Imperium. Um, uh, you can find lots of songs on YouTube, I guess. I mean, if you just want to test listen to it. And, um, I mean, just check it out and give us a chance. Uh, I'm sure you, I mean, if not the whole album, I'm sure you're going to find some cool songs that, you know, you will like on the album. Hold on. Have a little, oh, there we go. Well, tactical difficulty there for a second. The computer. Uh, Darn computers. Yeah. So, you know what? That's that's something I can ask you. What you know, obviously the music industry has changed a ton in say like the last ten years. You know, what's your views of just the way things have changed? Obviously bands aren't making money selling selling albums really so much anymore. Yeah. They're making money doing shows and selling merchandise and obviously the whole internet thing and you know the fact that people can go download your music any place they want, I just, you know, how how do you, how does a band use that to their advantage? I guess. Well, I guess uh, we need to accept the fact that that's the way it's gonna be from now on, and we can't do anything about it anyway. So uh, you know, if you're um, if you're doing it for uh, for a living, that's more complicated because you have to tour all the time to pay the bills. Uh, you know, us, uh, it's more like a hobby for us. So, um, you know, if we do a few shows during the year and, uh, you know, just sell our CDs there and uh, the merchandise, you know, it's uh, <clears throat> nothing to it. But, you know, the bands who do it for a living, you have to keep finding ways to uh, have income. So, um, you know, uh, Sell CDs, you said it. Sell merchandise and uh, tour. That's the only way. Right. Yep. Very good. Okay. One last thing. If you could uh, make a couple of radio tags for me to play on my show, I'd appreciate it. Um. Okay. Hi. What do you want me to say? I mean. So you can just say, you know, just say that. Uh, 
one, you can just say this, you know, this is a Ray and Path, and you're listening to DJ Rem at Metalhead Radio. And then you can do another one that just says, you know, Ray and Path at, and you're listening to Metalhead Radio. One without, one with DJ Rem, and then one without. Uh, Ram, it's like, that's like R-A-M. R-A-M, but yeah, pronounce Rem. Like rapid eye movement, Rem. Okay. Ah, Rem, okay. Um... And it's recording right now, so whenever you're ready, you can just shout it out. And if, you know, you can say this is Nicholas, too. You can throw your name in there, too. That'd be cool. Okay. Um, okay. Hi, this is Orion Path, and you're listening to DJ Ram on Metalhead Radio. How's that? Perfect, man. Perfect. And you want another one without the DJ, right? Yes, please. That one I can give to all the DJs to play before they play your songs. Okay. Hi, this is Orion Path, and you're listening to Metalhead Radio. <laughs> nice, dude. Appreciate it. I should do this as a living, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Radio promos. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, thanks a ton for uh, taking the time to talk to me. I appreciate it. This will be... I thank you, man. Thank you for the interview, and thanks uh, for taking an interest. Yeah, like I said, I, I really enjoy listening to you guys, so it's my pleasure. This, Thanks, man. The, um, the interview will replay back on the 29th at 10 p.m. Eastern, and then okay. after I play it back on my show, probably like Wednesday or so, I'll um, upload it to YouTube. Ah, that's good. That's and then, good. So, yeah, I started, I started putting all my interviews on YouTube, I mean, it only makes mm-hmm. sense. Somebody searches for your band, they're going to find the interview too. So, okay. Seems to have been working out well. I'll um, I'll email that to you guys in Pitch Black, and I'll also post it on your Facebook and MySpace and all that stuff. So. Okay, man. Thanks. It'll be Thanks a for uh, promoting us. Hey, like I said, that's the thing. You know, just like you mentioned, what you guys do is a hobby to you. It's a hobby to me. This is this is just, you know, I do this for the passion and love of music. That's the only reason I do this. And, you know, Metalhead Radio, the, the, the owners that run the station, they don't make any money. They have to pay for everything out of their pocket. Everything I do for my shows and all my equipment I pay for, you know, it's just... It's just, it's just yeah. like when you do a gig, by the time you get done, you probably don't make any money off it. So, nah, Not much, but uh, that's uh, the way to keep metal and, uh, you know, our music alive, you know, doing it from the heart. Yep, exactly. And bands like you that can do awesome metal and can actually sing, too, that means a lot to me. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, thanks. So, okay, well, you uh, have a great day and take care, okay? Okay, Spence. You too, man. Yep. Peace. Yeah.